All right, welcome to the Beachmont Breakdown, where we are decoding real estate investing. Uh, today, I've got an excellent guest, Brandon Schwab. He is in the senior living space and runs a boutique senior living fund, which is something that I've been super interested in. Uh, I've actually been looking into it for my grandmother, and I'm looking at the costs of everything. I'm So I'm really interested to see how it looks from an investor's perspective. Uh, so Brandon... Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into this space? Um, the background is I got investing in properties back in 2010, so post-2008 crash. Um, I began doing wholesaling primarily for the first couple of years. I earned um, awesome so like awesome active income, but I didn't have passive income. So in 2012 through 14, I began buying properties and I accumulated 23 homes over two years and I had passive income of $5,400. Um, kind of thought I had it all figured out and I was going to just keep on doing that. And then I got exposed to a family situation of, of um, my grandpa was in a 200 bed building down in Joliet, Illinois. And he's a guy that was really close to me. Um, so, so, so like my father passed at two and a half. So his dad was a huge person in my life. Well, when he had his second stroke, he ended up in a building with 200 people. And when we went to go and see him, he had an accident, right? And the care team didn't come five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. By 20 minutes, I got pretty pissed, Ryan, and I went to go get help. And and I just found like that that's how those places are. They have a terrible odor, they have a terrible atmosphere, and they just don't offer very good care. So I got exposed to a different way to provide just senior living down in Florida um, about five years after that. And I took to that and I said, that's, that's really different. It was a five bedroom home and they cared for five people there. And I said, this is really cool. And I took the concept back to Illinois and I opened up our first house or I bought our first house in 2014. Um, I opened it in 2015 and I filled it in 2017. The difference was though, I converted a 4,880 foot house in a town of 832 people and the house grossed $54,000 per month and our expenses were 28 to 32,000 a month. So we cleared post all the expenses over 20,000 each month and I said, well, I think I'm onto something. So. Um, we had the house appraised and the house appraised at a 13% cap rate and it appraised for $1.8 million. And I said, well, that's pretty cool. And then uh, we just kept on going. Um, home two, home three, home four, um, home five. And we figured that we were gonna change the industry now. Wow. That's, uh, it's always great to hear somebody that's got a story like that as a, a powerful kind of why of getting into the business. So where are we yep. now? How many places are you operating? We currently have five houses up and operational. We have two houses that all of us own and are opening by quarter two of 2023. And I have 7.2 acres of land that we bought and paid cash for pre-COVID and got the full approvals to build six homes on. So I currently have 13 um, home sites currently owned. We have five of them up and operating and we have two that are opening and an extra um, six that have to be built. We did put those on pause because during COVID, the cost to be able to build was too high. It was gonna add an extra $10 million to our total project costs. And I decided it was better to hold off and wait for um, the cost to come back down. Okay. So with these places now, what markets are you in and, and what types of things are you looking at um, whenever you're trying to determine where would be a good fit for this type of a model? We currently have um, five of our current homes that are all open. We are in sh sh Chicago land. Um, so we are all about an hour or two out of the city. So I'm typically in a country type town of anywhere from 5,000 people up to 
uh, 45,000. So what we typically um, look for is household incomes of anywhere of about $75,000 plus. We also look for a percentage of the population of over 12%. So if a town has a population of 40,000 people, we would um, like to see a population over just 65 of at least 12% and anything over like 15 to 18, those are awesome areas for us. So we first confirm that they have the income to pay for it and then B that they've got enough population there to fill what I'm looking for. So each so each of our homes are, are only between 10 and 20 people per home. So it isn't it's like I'm trying to fill um, 100 to 200 people. I'm only, I'm only trying to fill, our, our average house has about, just 16 people per home. Mm -hmm. So what's the process that you, you said on the first one, I understand that you've got some land and you're going to build. And so mm -hmm. that, that process is going to be much different. But when you started the first one, mm -hmm. um, because I have a similar experience with what we just did with my grandmother, she moved into a place, a similar boutique, uh, a house that was converted. Um, you know, when you did that first one, what modifications, what type of a timeline? So you close on the house. How long does it have it? How long is it a, to t get it up and running? Uh, like, sure. how do you staff it? You know, everything like that. So our first house, we closed on it on um, so like Halloween of 2014. I didn't get our, our actual permits to begin building until April of 2015. So you have to go through a process and get what's called a conditional um, use permit. And that basically gives you access to do this purpose for up to 20 years. Um, that does take some time. You have to hire in a attorney. You have to go through the whole process and hoops. And then um, you do need to talk to folks in, in the area of your house. And then once you get through that, then they give you the building permits. And then you have to build it. That typically takes six months to build it. The permit time can take 120 days. So you basically have a holding cost for the very first year just to kind of get it open. Once you then have it open, then you really need to hire a care team, a RN, um, and to operate it. I, I have a caregiver to every five to eight people compared to the overall competition has a caregiver to every 20 to 30 people. I felt that is wrong, but that's when you're in these cozy homes, you have a higher combination of people to offer care to people that have to have care. And that's the biggest factor that people are looking for when figuring out if, if their family member is going to get awesome care or, or not is if you have a caregiver to every 20 to 30 people, they can't keep up they cannot offer good care to 20 to 30 people, uh, particularly if everyone has to be checked in and changed every two hours. Yeah, absolutely. So when you say, and and obviously the conditional use permit pro, uh, process is going to be different just based on zoning laws wherever you are. Um, sure. Because I know that there are several spaces here in Louisville where like rooming houses, things like that can be allowed without even any permit, which... I bet Chicago is a little stricter than Louisville or wherever anybody else might be listening. Um, so when you say build it out, you know, what, what are you looking to do? Because essentially the place where my only experience with this is my grandma had basically a bedroom and there was one kitchen where they prepared meals for everyone. Uh, sure. And it sounds like smaller places like you, you don't need necessarily a big commercial kitchen or anything in there. So no. what what no. types of modifications do you feel like you need to make to the house if you're going to be ready to do something like this? So back in 2014, as I opened them, it was easier than it is today. So in, in our area, um, we will do a fire protection system for the whole house. Um, in our area, you have to do that when you have eight or more people. We have to have an ADA bathroom on each floor and also an ADA access point to get in and out of the house. That's basically like the entry point back in 2014. Today now it has changed where you do have to have a full commercial kitchen in each home, even if it's a home. Um, I don't do anything under 10 beds and I don't do anything over 20 beds. So I fall into that like in-betweener phase where 
some of the owner operators that are in this business, they have five people in the house. Those houses, you really don't need to have a full commercial kitchen, typically. I don't do that because I don't find it's a very duplicatable business model. That's that's good for an owner operator. That's a healthcare um, history. They're a they are a so RN or LPN. That's fine. But I don't have any of that history. So I need to build a company that will operate and have the overhead type dollars that I don't have to be there. So that's really how we've kind of built them. So 10 to 20 is is the only homes that I um, offer. And we describe them as boutique senior living, BSL. We actually are trademarking that term. Awesome. Uh, well, I mean, it sounds, it sounds great. Um, so Thank let's you. talk numbers then. You know, when you bring in investors, what types of returns do they get? I have to be careful with that, um, of course, with the SEC. So I do have a 506C, which is a like Reg D for accredited investors only. Um, and, and because I did the 506C, I can advertise it. So I can talk on that. However, I do have to clarify that I can only take investors that are accredited investors. Uh, that definition is a single person that earns over 200000 per year, a married couple that earns over 300000 or a net worth of like $1 million plus, excluding your personal home. So... If anyone fits into that, um, they can invest into our funds. If you do not, then I can't take money from you. So um, that's how I can talk on these podcasts with that. I have three funds. Um, our funds go from anywhere from 6% as high as 21.2% 21, 21 each year. So we have funds that kind of cater to different types of investors. Um, and we kind of cater to every, every person in between. So oftentimes people are interested in finding an asset class to invest in that can help people, first of all. But also they are looking for a good tangible asset to be back behind the investment. And then also to add the icing onto the overall cake is to have a, a healthcare field back behind it because people are able to get the aging of this country is huge. And if you can invest into an asset class that's helping take care of the biggest population of the whole country, that's, that's a good place to be, particularly when things get kind of uneasy. I mean, I think this past year, our, in, our investment wasn't as attractive because the Bitcoin was crushing it, right? At this time um, last year, they were earning 20, 30 percent. It felt it felt like each month where people were like, well, Brandon, you're offering 12 percent. That's all. Today, it's way different now. We've got investors that are fine with taking six to eight percent backed by tangible assets. Mm -hmm. Way different now where back then people were like six to eight percent are you kidding me because things have changed it is it has gone back to an older fashion of in, of investing where people are interested in having that tangible asset back behind there because uh, inflation's seven to eight percent they have to invest or their cash is going down and i also have family offices as well that have huge capital that are interested and they are placing capital into our investments because they are looking to get their investment portfolio into other asset classes. A lot of guys have a heavy, heavy percentage of their portfolio is in a is in the uh, class A or class B apartment buildings. What happening is that cap rate compressed right? Those things were being bought at three or 4% cap rates. Well, that's going to come back the other way and it's going to hurt those guys. Our cap rates didn't change at all. So people are interested in putting an equal portion of their investment portfolio in, into other asset classes. And a thing that's interested is this asset class was the top performing asset class in the 2008 crash so from 2005 through 2015 this outperformed every asset class there is in overall rois to 
to investors. And that's according to a chart from NIC. Yeah, I one of the things that I absolutely love about this idea is the recession resistant. Absolutely. Element to it. Um, because you have wild cash flows, and that's kind of why these cap rates are so high. Uh, you see the same thing a lot of times with trailer parks and RV parks, things like that, sure. that, that generate a ton of cash but don't necessarily facilitate as high as the sales price. Um, whereas with this, it just seems a lot more stable of an asset with the same yep. types of cash flows. Sure. And, and it's obviously, as you said, you know, the aging population in the country, it's going to be it's here. Crazy. And it's going to be here to stay. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, there is a chart from the federal government that is able to say that we are short 600,000 beds to keep up with the 2050 population that's coming. And they have an FHA program that is going to give financing to operators that have 200 plus beds that's under 3%. And it's a 35 to 40 year perm loan. They're doing that to increase the count uh, by 2050. That tells you something. Wow. I, you know, I was Clues. just at a conference too, and there's an economist saying that something like 60% of these big multifamily buildings that are about to mature here in the next year or two are not going to qualify on DSCR because of what has happened in interest rates so quickly. Yeah. Um, and, and so then you've got an asset class like this where the interest rates could jump up, which it's crazy what you're, you know, getting it under three, but the interest rates can jump up and the cash flow is still so good that Absolutely. the deals are still going to work. Yeah. Well, and to our cap rates for purchasing these things didn't go down to, to three to four percent. They were six to eight percent to buy, right? Where, um, that isn't that crazy where even if it even if it goes up to eight to ten percent you're in a good position for cash flow because these things the average bed today is about sixty two hundred dollars per bed right compared to in apartment which is what fifteen hundred bucks we are getting six thousand two hundred dollars per bed with an average profit margin of like 25 to 30 percent figured out it's big dollars. It's $2,000 plus. And a thing that happens is that um, you get the type of income that people have to have to cover those. So even if things are able to go up, you are doing just fine. Yeah, absolutely. I, the, that's why I say one of my, I think the most intriguing things about this asset class. And, and one of the things that I've been talking to people more and more about is diversifying across a lot of different things. You know, we can have Absolutely. some really high cash flow things and you have those stable apartment buildings uh, and being able to get access to a lot of different, a lot of different properties. And obviously I think in this, you're getting healthcare, you're getting the housing uh, and, yep. and massive cash flow. So yeah. Um, do you, uh, you have any uh, you know parting shots, anything you'd like to say on the way out? One of the best things I could tell is as I do these podcasts, like one of two things typically happens. Um, either people want to invest with us um, or they want to do what I do. So I have two things that I could offer people that would basically qualify if they'd be a good fit to invest with us or to open up their own home. Um, the first quiz is in is invest in s senior living Dot com. That is a quiz that people could take. It's about two or three minutes. It's about 15 questions, but it asks them good questions to, to qualify if they are a good fit. Um, everyone that thinks they are, they always aren't. Um, I only take about three out of 10 people that actually take this quiz are actually a good fit to, to invest. And the other one is folks that want to do what I do. We do have an online course that we are teaching people how to do what we do, long as they aren't in our area, of course, um, which is um, seniorlivingacademy.com. So if any person's interested, that's a great place to go. Um, that's going to ask you questions as well if you are a good fit. So oftentimes people are able to hear me on here and go, holy cow, Brandon, this is great. They call me and ask me if they can um, talk to me and ask me questions. And I just don't have time to talk to 20, 30 people for an hour. So 
I offer that for uh, people that are interested, and those are avenues that people can uh, get in contact with us. I think that's great is what we're doing is I'm building an online group of people that are doing this, and I'm giving investors the opportunity to, to park capital into these folks' projects. So even if they aren't in our area, they can actually invest through our fund into homes all over the country. Our fund only invests into 10 to 20 person homes. That's it. And we, our fund total is about 75 million. Um, and we are going to change the industry. We are going to turn it upside down, kind of how Uber changed the whole taxi cab industry. We are doing the identical thing for an industry that's pretty ancient. I mean, think of things back in the day. When you used to call a taxi, you used to put your hand up and go, taxi, taxi. That's, that is pretty ancient, right? That's like pushing your own car. <laughs> How we care for the elderly today is just like that. It's terrible. It is out of date and it has to be changed. The whole thing has to be torn down and changed. And we are a company that's aiming to do that. So if anyone is forward thinking, is interested in parking capital into this and go, Brandon, I don't have time to do everything that you're doing, but if I can invest with you we have got a fund to help you do that so uh people can be part of that and then also help change their investment portfolio to include an asset class that is the top performing asset class awesome yeah i know when i was hearing you speak that was exactly what i was thinking is it seems like we probably need this here in louisville too these numbers are crazy so i'll definitely Let's post go, those links up and uh, i Thank appreciate you. your time this morning hey man uh, awesome meeting you Thank you. Awesome. Hopefully we can uh, do some business together sometime soon. All right. Perfect. Thank yeah. you very much. Thanks.